and welcome to the recording on how to set up your Plan Ahead payroll system. Please note that this recording is based on the beta version of the payroll system and many of the screens are subject to change. However, in this recording I will discuss the changes that we came, including how to set up the payroll as well as the terminologies used in order to give you a better understanding going forward. The screen before you is labeled the dashboard. This consists of the setup, input, reports, as well as the period end and the year end. On the top of the screen, you will notice a selection which allows you to change the pay period in which you would be paying the employee. What is important to note, however, is the word frequency. What is a frequency? A frequency is a pay period in a recurring length of time over which employees' details are recorded and paid. So this could be monthly, fortnightly, or weekly. What this essentially means is that within your payroll system, you may have different batches of employees who are paid in different lengths of time. So you may have a batch of employees who are paid monthly and they will fall into the frequency called monthly. Or you may have employees who are paid on a fortnight basis who will fall into the fortnight frequency. And then you may also have employees who are paid on a weekly basis who will fall into the weekly frequency. Important to note, if you have converted your data from the wages system to the payroll, there should be no need for you to insert your employees into the different frequencies as that information should have carried across to the payroll system. So if you had monthly employees based on the 12 periods in the year that they would be paid, these employees will automatically be put into their different frequencies upon conversion of your data. The same will go for the fortnightly employees and the weekly employees. However, what you would have to do as part of the setup is to set up a calendar year for each of these frequencies. In order to set up the payroll for the different frequencies, click on set up payroll and then navigate to the screen called frequency. On the screen you will note that the frequencies have already been set up by either monthly, fortnightly or weekly. If you only pay your employees once a month, that is monthly paid employees, there will be no need for you to set up calendars for the fortnightly and for the weekly. The same would be if you only pay employees weekly, then you would not need to set up calendars for your fortnightly and your monthly. Or if you pay your employees fortnightly only, then you will not need to set up a calendar for the monthly and the weekly paid employees. If you click next on the screen, you will come to the menu that says frequency pay periods. On the screen, you will create the calendar year for the frequencies you will be working with. In order to generate the frequencies, click on generate periods. You will note the screen that comes up that says processing records. Select the frequency that you want to generate the calendar year for. In this instance, I am going to use monthly paid as my example. Click on select. Select start date. If you have converted your data from the wager system, you would have cleared your last pay period. Your start date in the payroll system will be one day after you have cleared your pay details. So for example, if you last paid your employees until the end of February, being the 28th of February, your start date in this system is going to be the 1st of March. 
I am going to insert the 1st of March 2021 and my tax year for this period is going to be 2022 and because I'm going to be generating the calendar year for my monthly paid employees where it says select frequency for calculation I'm going to select monthly and then you would click on go the calendar year for my monthly frequency will be generated if I wanted to generate a frequency for my fortnightly employees I would click again on generate period I will then select my fortnightly paid frequency and say for example my fortnightly frequency started on the 5th of March I will then insert the 5th of March and insert my tax year and then my frequency for calculation will be fortnightly and I will click on go if I also wanted to generate a frequency for my weekly paid employees I will click on generate periods again then select my frequency which will be weekly paid insert my start date from when my weekly paid employees would be paid insert my tax year and select the frequency for calculation as weekly and then click on go if I scroll through the frequency pay periods there should be 26 pay periods for my fortnightly employees for my monthly employees there should be 12 pay periods and for my weekly paid employees there should be 52 pay periods so to answer one of the frequently asked questions of what happens when you need to add in an extra pay period say in a 12 month cycle for example if your employees get paid a 13 check and you've only got 12 months set up well the answer to that ladies and gentlemen is that you are able to come back onto the frequency pay periods and edit the dates for any period so ladies and gentlemen that concludes the setup of the frequencies and the calendar year for the frequencies we next move on to the employee screen this is where you will see all of your current employees terminated employees and all employees if you view the screen you will see that there's a new column that has been added which is called frequency I did mention before that you would not have to set up the employees per frequency as that information would have carried through from your wages system and that would have been based upon the pay periods you said that the employee would work when you initially set up the employee in the wages system However, if you do need to change the frequency of a batch of employees or even a single employee, you can either tag them individually or you can click on the tag all button and then click on batch update and select frequency and then change them to a different frequency. Another crucial part of the setup on the payroll system is the normal enterprise that an employee would belong to. So what is a normal enterprise? A normal enterprise is the description of the activity which the employee was employed to perform. If you do not have a normal enterprise code set up for an employee, 
you would have to assign the employee to a normal enterprise code. This will be very important when you are generating the pay for the employee. In order to assign the employee to a normal enterprise code, you first need to make sure that under the setup payroll, you have the normal enterprise code set up. In order to set up a new one, you click on setup payroll and then navigate to the tab that says enterprises. And in the screen, you are able to insert enterprises. Once you have set up the enterprise, you go back onto the employee screen. You can either tag them individually or per batch, depending on what the employee's normal enterprise code would be. And then you would click on batch update. On the screen, you would select the normal enterprise code. And then you would click on go. You will also need to set up your extra earnings and your deductions and if you use any fringe benefits. In order to do this, you would click on set up payroll and then navigate to the extra earnings screen. So if you had extra earnings in the wager system, that would have pulled through to the payroll system. But what is different here is that in the setup you have a column that says in use. If you are going to be using any of these extra earnings or deductions, you would need to insert a 1 which indicates yes or a 0 which indicates no. Some of my headings have already been selected to be in use, but if, for example, I wanted to use the heading called Reimburse, I would click on the in use column and insert a one. If I click on Next, I move on to my deduction screen. Some of these headings are not editable, for example, ETI, PAYE, PAYE Adjustment, and UIF. These headings will always be in use because these are deductions that are required to be used in any payroll system. Again, if I wanted to use a deduction heading, I would click in the column that says in use and insert a one. The same rules will apply for my fringe benefit headings, which is also found under the payroll setup. For example, if I was going to use pension fund or provident fund, I would edit the in use column to indicate a one and then I would save. Now that you have set up the payroll, the next step would be to generate your payments for a selected period. In order to do this, you will click on the selection block next to pay period start date. Once you do this, it will open up a calendar that you have set up per frequency. For my example, I am going to select my monthly paid employees Once you have selected the frequency and the pay period for the frequency, all of the actions you perform will be related to this specific period. You can go ahead and insert your pay details by either generating default pay, importing from spreadsheets or clocking systems compatible with the plan ahead payroll, or you can insert your pay details via the input pay details screen. If you choose to generate default pay, remember that this is equivalent to the task entry screen on the wager system. So if I click on generate default pay, and if I make a comparison between 
the task entry screen on the wager system, you will find that all of these headings have been inserted onto the generate default pay screen. If you hover your mouse over certain blocks and selections within the system, you will find little information bubbles which allow you to identify the purpose and the uses of the selected area. As mentioned before, when discussing the normal enterprise code assigned to an employee, the reason is simply that the normal enterprise code for an employee is required when you generate default pay. You can then also directly capture either your extra earnings or your deductions by selecting one of the buttons and inserting your information that will be relevant to the employee and then click save. The same can be done for the deductions. You would insert a deduction against an employee and click on save. In order to consolidate all of the information that you have captured in the above buttons, you will click on Calculate Payroll and then proceed to the Input Pay Details screen. You can also directly capture information into these screens by clicking on the Insert buttons and then clicking on OK. Once you have captured all of your payroll information, you can proceed to your monthly reports that you would print out. And some of these reports would be your summarized pay sheets, your pay slips, EMP to one, current pay details, or saving details. Once you have captured all of your information and printed out your reports, you can then click on the close period and the information will be retained within the history of the employee. So, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the video on how to set up the beta version of the payroll system. Once again, I urge you to convert your wages data and then follow these steps in the video. This will allow you to get familiar with the system. I also want to stress that this is the beta version of the system and is under continuous development until March 2022. The look and feel of the system as well as the styling will be changed. However, these basic steps that I have shared in the video will assist you a lot going forward. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.